What's going on guys, Chris here. We're going to just do a quick analysis. You know, I've been watching uh, FX Evolution on YouTube and he's a technical stat guy and his stats um, are, the, are the master and the technicals are the slave to his statistics. And I don't know, I think I'm, I'm disagreeing with him. I'm disagreeing with FX Evolution. Um, you know, I got stats of my own. And that, that's kind of the thing where this it makes this game a little messy. And, it, you know, I use my cycle forecasting as my stats. So, like, this is math. Like, statistics, this is the decennial. This is the uh, four-year. This is the Q-Spectrum 2. This has taken all historical data and made a math cycle out of it. So, uh, but his statistics are about specifically the Santa Rally. And because we had the Santa Rally, you know, within the re reasonable time frame, January is going to be positive, and he's he's expecting kind of a continuation of the rally. I don't I don't think I'm that positive, like that it's going to go that much more. And I think he's thinking about this fair value gap in the weekly. If I can actually click on it. He's looking at this fair value gap and it being filled. And it's possible. I, I just, I haven't gotten there yet. And uh, meaning like I, I don't, until this weekly resistance here, we get a weekly close above it. I am not for that plan. I think it's too early. So I think this is kind of the beginning of the bull trap. Um, and that, that's kind of the, how I'm opening this video is like we're in the bull trap right now. Like this moving average channel, 40 period, it is it has served as bull traps in the past and bear traps. It served as a bear trap here, served as bear traps here. Uh, it served as a bull trap here, uh, bear traps here, bear trap, bear trap, bull trap, bull trap, bear trap. Bear trap, bear trap, bull trap, bear trap. So I I really put my full weight behind uh, this moving average channel. I don't like moving averages. I like moving average channels because it, it alludes to a pattern that's developing, an accumulation, a distribution. And ch that moving average channel tells you where to look for that. And we're in it right now <clears throat> so you know you would kind of ask Chris like oh what's the pattern that you see right now well one we're in the upper third so that's prime resistance zone and two like the, for me to get excited about bullish behavior I need it to close on the week a weekly close above 4061 spot 65 until then I have to assume a breakdown is coming and you know, if I were to go to a smaller time frame, you know, we're counting down on the futures of the SP 500, and we're putting in a swing failure pattern on the 12-hour, and we're getting a topping signal that uh, on the 8-hour and the 12-hour combined, which is a, in, this thing is like looking to curl down. That's a lot of downward pressure. They're about to pinch, and some downward force, and we got some 12-hour resistance here. And if it fails on the close, it's more likely the bears are going to keep on piling in uh, on the momentum uh, through the holiday into this week and into the earnings. Uh, it's not guaranteed, but I think it's a good probability that this is probably the top here. Um, not 100% certain, but like if I were to combine a couple things, one is the math cycles, Q spectrum two, decennial, and the four year, we've pretty much passed um, a possible peak uh, for rotation down. That's how I interpret these cycles, uh, these waves, is that, okay, it's an impulse down that's coming. Once we pass the peak, or once we get to the peak, I'm expecting an impulse down or break in market structure. Break in market structure, we're, we're getting there for the H4 and the H12. It's a, H12 is a little more uh, more efficient, but um, if you were to put this on like a non-fast, so this one's on like a faster, uh, aggressive mode, 
put it on the non-aggressive mode, it's still uh, within reason of uh, getting rejected uh, by this breaker here. It was just a little bit of a deviation. Uh, here, if we put it to the daily, we're still, uh, the daily um, bearish uh, breaker is still holding this right here. Uh, you know, if we reclaim this uh, this area, you know, the the daily breaker is still holding. Uh, I mean, if I refresh it, it, the this hasn't gone away, so it still thinks it's in play, and this could be the trick, uh, the the trap for the bulls. It's just I don't know. We just don't know. Like until the market structure actually breaks, and the things that I'm looking at specifically is like the aggressive 12 hour as like a slower version uh, <clears throat> and then the four hour um you know th these are things like if we break below <laughs> if we close below here like it looks highly likely like i think this line is specifically a reclaim of that daily breaker on the high so this is that high of that daily breaker so we move to the four hour, we break below, we come in for a retest, that daily breaker is gonna kick in um, for uh, the downside and the bearers really step in. I think it's just a false sense of security here. You know, I have no idea, this could be totally wrong, but based upon what I see, you know, if we go to today, we're at the 16th. So that's kind of here. I mean, looking at the decennial cycle, here that we see here it's it's going down all the way and we're bottoming at the beginning of March it looks like and that could be totally wrong or it could there could be something to it you know I, I got to keep an open mind right because this has got math behind it and I have no idea and then if we take a look at institutions maybe they have some proprietary information and institutions are heavily short now so I, I'm speculating that this is probably, if the institutions are right, if the math cycle, what it says in terms of this rotation to the downside on the decennial, it's almost completely inverse of what this uh, four-year cycle is saying. But, um, you know, in terms of where they agree, is like another possible uh, point to where it looks like it's near the, the rate hike where things could roll over again. But in terms of a rollover and where the target is, it has to start making some progress there. And I mean, 3,000, 3,200 is not, it's not close. It's pretty far, um, you know, around 20 plus percent away if it were to reach there. And that's the target. And right now there's a lot of volatility, but you know, if we were to, I, you know, I, I like these uh, the, this momentum indicator. This says that basically with the black line underneath on both of them, that the trend is still down. Um, it's still uncertain whether the trend is flipped. Um, if the trend starts going above this red line here, the trend is flipped on the daily. But it's kind of up in the air. And I think that's that false security for the bulls. It's that bull trap effect. Uh, that I see uh, previous week high is uh, is the the danger zone. We've already purged it. We've poked above it, and then now we're we're down on the the day. And um, you know, with this weekly uh, trend down still, we could get slammed really hard. Say if the trend starts falling apart on the week, and uh, the sh the faster um, price line meets up with the trend line. It's going to be a huge momentum to the downside uh, really fast. I think both of these, like the price line just needs to drop once and it's going to have a huge squeeze to the downside and it's going to go quick. And that's kind of just what it's implying to me as far as like the, the speed to the downside. You know, you don't want to be caught. Um, for one, you could set, argue for both sides. Like you don't want to be caught on the wrong side on the bull side or the bear side. But when, when we look at this, this looks pretty bad as far as like the amount of speed that we could see, just because when it starts pinching, it, it implies a lot of speed that's coming um, to, to that direction. So once, you know, if the price line goes down, a lot, you know, obviously people will be able, what if the trend line goes up? And it could, it's just, it's harder for it to do that. There's a lot of work that needs to be put in 
And it just makes sense if we just take it from the point of view where if we close the week above this, then it's highly likely we will continue to go higher. But the inverse is also true. If we do not close the week above that, the more likely we will to continue going down. And based upon the math cycle that we see here, taking specifically the, the decennial and the Q spectrum two, just what it's saying, we're, we're on our way to going down. And then also in confluence with the institutional bias, which is to the short side, we just, we're just kind of waiting for market structure to break. And this is this H4. And once this begins, and then this aggressive H12 structure breaks, we're already broken on the daily and it hasn't gone away. It's still here. We just need to get below this line, 39.6856, and that happens to be in the middle of this four hour bullish order block. Once we take out these lows, it's over. And we, we've already begun making our way and those lows are here and we'll be into this aggressive H12 um, bullish order block, which could break because what does that look like? A swing failure pattern, left shoulder, deviation head right here, right shoulder, and it looks terrible. And now you could see the amount of momentum that could be to the downside. It's, it's gonna, you know, if we were to go down, it would be crazy. And that's why I'm positioned to the short side because it, it, <laughs> one, we haven't, invalidated we didn't hit the invalidation mark this is the invalidation mark we would be above the bull trap channel 40 period moving average channel we would be above this weekly resistance on 4061 spot 65 for retest into strength uh, pretty much i would say i would call it strength and uh, retest resumption off but because we haven't had that, you know, people like these diagonal trend lines. I don't like them. They're not really useful uh, for, and they change all the time. They're not useful. It's very uh, subjective. But these weekly lines are not subjective. Um, so I, I, didn't, I could say the same thing about gold. Like we go to here, um, you know, a lot of people are looking at gold. I think there's a bull trap on gold. And... You look here, <clears throat> we're able to have a fib because my uh, indicator is able to put, was able to identify a range and we just put a fib there, uh, the, the indicator's order blocks and you know we've went to the fake out zone and we got rejected. And then look at there, we got caught in the swoop here. We're at resistance and we go below here, we're below quarterly resistance deviation right here left shoulder right shoulder so i don't know how long this will hold on uh or if it will get rejected right away um uh, because this is a quarterly thing um but i expect it to come down into support and this is where i would buy gold so if you are like fomoing into gold i would say you're not late to the party you're almost getting ready getting started like it needs to come back to retest for the swing failure pattern for the swing failure pattern to fill this is the deviation this is the left shoulder where's the right shoulder there is no right shoulder it needs to come down before we can go up and that's why i'm saying you're not late because we're waiting for it to go into the right shoulder so that in gold is really sensitive it follows the S&P 500 and that's kind of why i think that's 500 is going to go down uh, just because it's it's just too early. Um, so, you know, th that's kind of like a loose correlation. But, um, and then if we were to take this um, moving, uh, what's it called? Pitchfork. You know, it's got Fibonacci numbers. And it looks like we broke past the standard, uh, what's it called? Um, pitchfork range. Um, so we have to expand it. So instead of the 0.618, in 0 0.618, 0 0.764, we got to add in a one to it. We add a one to it, and it looks like we're really close. If And if we broke that H4 market structure break, we took out these lows, 
what we where will we be? We will be right into the the prime seller zone. That's kind of just how I see it. We would be in the prime seller zone if we were to put um, a a two there to mark the edge of strong resistance or right at it. Uh, it's the previous week high. If you, if you want to use the previous week high as like the measurement or um, <laughs> the H12 uh, resistance line, uh, either or, um, we're right at it. And uh, <laughs> uh, I think that's it. I think this is it, whether it's implied through here on this, uh, what's it called, the sending pitch for channel uh, using Fibonacci numbers, we, that was a whole number, number two, and then uh, 1.764 would be a good entry, uh, basically a, a sh market structure break on the four hour. Um, you know, it, that's kind of basically what's shown here. Um, or, y yeah, like, uh, the, um, the 12 hour line here, which is um, three... 994.35 that's uh, that's put in and, you know we got two more hours and 50 minutes uh, but I'm, I'm that confident I think that's it um, so you know if it closes above then you know to forget this idea I just wanted to be a little early I mean it's not necessarily a good trait it's just it's a little bit of an ego thing uh, but you know that's kind of what I see um, I'm, I'm waiting, you know, for the bears to be invalidated. They're not invalidated yet. 4061, spot 65. We need a weekly close above that. And if we don't get that, this will be a lower high on the weekly close. And it will continue to pick up momentum. Because this, if this is the uh, left shoulder here, this is the deviation, the head, we need a right shoulder. So there's a huge incentive for it to want to come and retest here. So... Uh, you know, obviously, people will be like, "Well, it doesn't. What if it doesn't do that?" Uh, well, I I don't know. Like, I'm I'm just doing things based upon how prices behaved in the past, which is it does this pattern where there's a right shoulder, a deviation, and a right uh, a, a left shoulder, a deviation, and a right shoulder, and that's kind of been that way. Uh, you know, left shoulder, deviation, right shoulder. It, it, it just so for there to not be. For there to be a left shoulder and a not uh, not a right shoulder, it's just odd. So, you know, if you, if you're optimistic, be optimistic. After we have this impulse down, that's what I would say, because um, <laughs> then we would have a flush out of just the speculators, uh, or just the 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 bull trap would be able to play out. You know, we don't want to buy when we're so close to the bull trap. The bull trap is basically Schrodinger's cat. Neither is either both the cat is both dead or both alive at the same time. Like there, there is no real certainty until it makes its exit. And we could say that the no man's land is basically this weekly resistance and this weekly support because we're we're assuming we're going to get a retest on the right shoulder. So that's my breakdown. You know, I, I you know, I, I'm a big fan of FX Evolution and their statistics, but here's where I gotta draw the line: is that um, you know he's getting really bullish, but I, you know, I got my stats too. If with my cycle, you know, there's there's no gurus, there's only cycles, and you know, I applied the cycles. I applied the cycles, and uh, right now it's it's not looking like we're ready to go higher. It's not ready, and um, I know there's a lot of people wanting it to go higher. Uh, you know, I get that because those are the optimists. You know, th those are the optimists, and I could be optimistic. It's just the wrong time. You know, you gotta have proper invalidation points. So but we could say the bulls are invalidated here, the bears are invalidated there. So right now it's Schrodinger's cat. The <laughs> there is no bulls and bears invalidated yet but we're leaning towards the bears being uh, the bulls being invalidated just because institutions the fed and the whole thing about 
the Fed um, and the, the yields, the yields uh, predicting that they're not going to hike rates anymore. Uh, and, you know, like, I don't know. That, that, that might be too much speculation. Like, I, I, I have no idea if they're right or not. Like, it, it's, it makes sense because it benefits the optimists. But, you know, <laughs> what makes those people different from me? In terms of my analysis and their analysis, like I don't know, like uh, I I think we're the same, uh, you know, like people. I I bet they do the same thing I do. They look at statistics and this and that, and fundamentals. But you know, they can be wrong too. They've been wrong in the past. Uh, so, and the same with me. But I actually have like good points of invalidation, which is this weekly close. And this weekly close, and I'm saying it's too early to tell. But we are in a trap zone, and we haven't really tested the bottom for support. So because we haven't tested the bottom for support, means we can't tell if the bulls are really there. It could be a, a rug pull. You know, we need to see if this is strong first. And that's why we need that right shoulder. And that's when, you know, a retest resumption is what I would do. But the thing is, we're not sure. We're not sure until we get back over. If we were to come down retest, we would need to get back and reclaim above this weekly high and close above that weekly high. That's what I would do for a safe entry because after a retest and we resume and we have a higher close, it assumes that it's strong. And the bulls are ready to go. But that's why I'm saying that it's too early for the bulls.